As Benjamin Franklin said, by failing to prepare, you're preparing to fail. And when it comes to FSA exams, there's no doubt that there's no way you can pass an exam without months of hard preparation leading up to the exam date. There's no substitute for studying and for knowing the material. But you can know the material and still mess up on exam day if you don't follow um, a sound strategy on the day of the exam. And the only way to do that is to practice in advance. So I'd like to just go through a few things that maybe have fallen by the wayside or you haven't thought about, particularly if this is the first time you've ever taken an FSA caliber exam offered by the Society of Actuaries. So let's start before the exam even happens. Sleep is extremely important. It's hard to get rest before the exam because you've spent all this time preparing, you're nervous, that's completely understandable, but don't you know, burn those midnight hours, you know, into the night trying to, you know, to cram at the last minute. It's probably not going to add a lot of value to your ability to recall information the next day. Go to bed early, you know, eat a good meal, uh, eat healthy foods. Um, just, you know, prepare your body for what's going to be a very grueling experience the next day. A six hour handwritten essay exam is not a fun experience. It requires a tremendous amount of energy. And yes, when it's over, you're going to be very, very mentally exhausted. So go into it with as much energy as you possibly can because you want your brain to be sharp. Now, you're going to be given a 15-minute read-through time for both the morning and the afternoon session. This is a very important uh, opportunity uh, to make sure that you read every single question. And don't get bogged down on any one question. This is not the time to try to start solving problems in your head. Don't do that. Try or Really resist that. You want to make sure that you have the opportunity to scan through the entire exam cover each question and what you're doing here is trying to get a feel for what you're about to have to endure for the next uh, three hours and and I also want you to sort of think of yourself as a lion on the on the plane and you're sizing up the herd you're looking at a herd of gazelles you're looking for the weakest one well in in, in terms of the exam you're looking for the easiest question so if you see a question on a topic that you absolutely know you want to be sure that you answer that question. So you want to keep in mind that there is a question that I'm going to knock out of the park. I'm not going to run out of time before I get to that question because often uh, the SOA puts the easy ones toward the end. And so you want to make sure that you know that those are there. And I would even go so far as to say work those first because you want to bank those points that, that are easy for you. So that's what you're doing during the read-through time is you're kind of sizing up the exam. You're not actually working the exam yet. Once the exam starts, it's extremely important to be aware of where you are time-wise. I can't stress this enough. In fact, this may be the single most important skill or practical skill to have uh, that will allow you to pass the exam is time management. It's critical that you know where you are time-wise. And it's so easy to say, oh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll keep an eye on the clock. But it's hard on exam day because your mind is racing. Uh, you're you're, you're going to get flustered at times. You're going to have hard questions. Things are going to take you longer to do than you anticipated. So it's extremely important to practice this before the exam day so that you're disciplined enough to, to look at the clock on a regular basis. And so you really need to, to practice this before you go in. Uh, obviously, you have three minutes per point. That's the way it works out. So if you have a five-point question, you need to answer. You need to spend no more than 15 minutes on that question. In fact, I, I tend to tell people that, that that's more of a time cap than something that than more of a goal. In other words, don't feel like you have to write for 15 minutes. Just know that when 15 minutes is up, the time is up because if you go over, it's okay maybe to go over on a couple of questions, but if you're you know routinely going or taking longer than you should on each question, then obviously you're going to run out of time, and, and that's going to cost you points because you're not going to have the opportunity to answer every question as well as you could have. So I would recommend you know checking in with the clock after each question, but at a minimum, you know maybe have four checkpoints. You know maybe every uh, you know half hour or so uh, check in with the clock and just just be aware of where you are. Know if you're behind schedule or ahead of schedule.
answer every single question. Um, nobody ever got any points for white space on an SOA exam. So even if you're completely clueless, put down something. I mean, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe they uh, wrote a bad question that nobody's going to get right. I mean, you know, put down something there because, again, white space won't give you any uh, credit at all. Um, always fall back on concepts. So, like, if you get really stumped by a mathematical question, just write out uh, or talk about how you might calculate it if you had enough information. For example, sometimes you may have enough information in the problem, but for whatever reason, at that moment in time, you're not seeing it. It's okay to just say, okay, well, I would solve this if I knew that, you know, if I had the value of n, you know, in this formula. You know, at least tell the grader that you knew the concept, you knew the formula, you knew how to do the calculation, but for whatever reason, you're not pulling it all together at that moment. You're probably still going to get a fair amount of credit if you can convey to the grader that you knew the answer. Next, this is very important. Be easy on the grader. A human has to grade your exam, and it's not a lot of fun to grade a problem that's just completely scattered, that's disorganized. So give some thought to how you yourself would want uh, information to be presented that you have to grade. And so it's very important to, to use outlines effectively. You know, you're not trying to write perfect prose. This is not an essay. Uh, use an outline. Use hierarchies. You know, hit the high level points first and then get down into a lower level of detail. Let's look at an example of a question. So here's question six. This is a 12 point question and there's three parts to that. And, uh, uh, look at this uh, part C. Most of the points are in part C, so that's where we're going to spend most of our time. And we're being asked to provide examples of actuaries in the performing arts. Probably not a question you're going to see on a real exam, but who knows? Anything's possible. So here's how I would approach this. Notice that I've in on the exam day you're going to be given paper uh, to write your answers on, and notice how I've uh, written the question number. And the sub-question parts are written 6C at the very top of the page. Now, on exam day, this is not the time to be environmentally conscious. I would recommend using a different piece of paper for every, not only every single question, but every sub-question. So if, if 6A or question 6 has parts A, B, and C, you're going to use a minimum of three pages to answer that problem. You're going to have one with 6A on the top, one with 6B, and one with 6C. And the reason I recommend that is because you it's so hard to know exactly how much space your answer is going to occupy on the page. And it's just way better to leave extra space because if you end up with some extra time at the end and you want to come back and add some detail, it's a lot easier when you have that extra space. But... To me, it's just it just makes things cleaner. The other thing is, I would just go into it assuming that your your after you turn your paper, that somebody's going to knock it off of a desk and it's going to get scattered across the floor. Well, if you've written your question number at the top of the, if each page clearly, it'll be really easy for somebody to put that back together. And so, you know, like in this case, question six C. Even if I need an extra page, so on my next page, I would write six C continued. Uh, so, you know, I would just make it very easy for somebody to piece that back together. So let's take a look at how I've answered this question. So I've, I've listed, you know, at a high level, there's six, um, six examples of actuaries in performing arts. They've appeared in film, theater, television, literature, manga even, and video games. And so for this type of question... I've probably already earned most of my points at that point because the high-level concepts are going to typically be worth more points. But to get full credit on the question or to get even more credit, I would want to add more detail. But the reason I've listed out the high points first is because typically, I think, you know, at least the way my mind works is I kind of have these cascades of, of outlines in my head coming into an exam. So I've memorized the high points and then I also know some detail under those. But it's easier for me to go ahead and, and put the high points down first and show that I knew those and then spend time at a more granular level. And so that's how I've constructed uh, this solution. I've, I've listed my six topics and now I'm going to give more detail on the above uh, examples. And, 
you know, and, and I'll list detail of varying degrees for each one. So my first example is the first example of a film where an actuary appeared was Double Indemnity in 1944, but that's all I could remember about that. I couldn't remember anything about the plot, so I moved on to another film called Are You With It? But I remembered that in this film, an actuary is forced to join a carnival after misplacing a decimal point. That's too bad. Um, so that's, you know, are you the fact that I've recalled Are You With It? That would be worth, you know, a couple points, and then maybe just this obscure detail about the plot of that film might be just worth another, you know, single point. So another film is Fight Club, and then another one is about Schmidt, where Jack uh, Nicholson played a retired actuary. And so then I've moved on to number two, and these all tie back to my high-level list above. And again, it's very easy for a grader to see that. I don't have to rewrite, you know, actuaries in theater. Again, I've already written that, and I've tied it together with these numbers. And so I've written that I Love You Because is a musical. It features a leading character that is an actuary, and it also features the actuary song, which has been performed again in other plays. And so obviously I'm, I'm going to need another page to finish this solution so I would keep going but this is just kind of gives you the general format that I recommend following always write out formulas before you do any mathematical calculations remember you know on the exam they're trying to test your knowledge of something not necessarily your ability to hit the right button on the calculator and so if you even in where I think this really screws people up is when they really know something well and they just say, OK, well, I don't need to write the formula out for that. That's simple. And you skip ahead, particularly if you don't show all your work and you try to go straight to the to the mathematical solution. If you make even the simplest error, it may completely obscure the fact that you knew uh, the concept. And so that's that's really unfortunate in the way you show that you know the concept is to write the formula. So let's suppose we have a question where uh, in part B we're asked to calculate the value of a 10-year immediate annuity using the following values. So the first thing I would do again is I've written 12BII at the top indicating that this is the second part of subquestion B of question 12 and I'm using a whole piece of paper uh, just to write out you know here's my immediate annuity I've written the formula and then I've uh, written you know filled in the numbers and I can crunch that through the calculator so it's just really you know useful to show that I knew the formula because now even if I type the interest rate in my calculator wrong maybe I typed it in as 3% or, or whatever so I think in most cases you would pass a question if you demonstrate that you knew the formula. Always focus on the current question. This is just a quick tip. It's easy to have a lingering thought about a previous question that kind of troubled you, but try to put all your energy at any given moment on the current question and block out other questions. Don't contradict yourself when you're solving a question or answering a question you you'll never you know get docked points for providing too much information but if you contradict yourself think of those points as canceling out because the grader doesn't really know which side you're standing for so you really need to pick a point or pick a side and go with that uh, so that you don't lose points and then the final point just throughout the exam again just really you know stay cool relax understand that everybody on that day is taking the same exam they're struggling too. Um, the questions are hard you're gonna have questions that stump you you're gonna get flustered there's gonna be things that you know you knew cold going into the exam date but for whatever reason on that day you can't remember those types of things happen you're not trying to write a perfect exam okay you don't have to be perfect to pass the exam so just you know keep going keep writing move through the end and answer every question and I really think one of the best analogies if you've seen the movie Cool Hand Luke there's a scene where he gets bullied around he gets you know he keeps getting knocked to the ground over and over and over but he just keeps getting up and I think that's really what you have to do on exam day is be cool hand Luke you're gonna get hit in the mouth over and over by these questions but you want to just keep getting up keep fighting and make it to the end this is about survival it's not about being perfect and hopefully if you knew the material going in and you manage your time well on the exam day and you just write and write and write during that whole time you're gonna pass the exam and this will all be behind you